There really are enough problems in the world without further compounding them with the imaginary problems that we create in the imaginary worlds that we create. And by that, of course, I am referring to gaming companies and developers who create games. Now, this is going to be a review, including some minor or major spoilers, if you will, of Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, but there's going to be more than just that, because Deus Ex, Mankind Divided symbolizes to me many of the disturbing trends I've seen grow in the last few years. Indeed, the image you are looking at, even as I speak, very well uh, fits what I encountered in Deus Ex, Mankind Divided, and indeed fits a trend that is nigh omnipresent, with one exception, and I will get to that exception a bit later. So, overall, Deus Ex, Mankind Divided is a pretty good game. It's, it's not bad, it's uh, fun, um, but unfortunately, to my mind, it pales in comparison to it, its predecessor for a number of reasons. I think the story isn't nearly as well written, and one of the biggest issues with it is it commits the fatal error that so many companies commit these days in having uh, an important plot twist that seems to only be revealed in some presumably future DLC, which is to say Adam Jensen's situation with his new Augs. Yes, spoiler. He has these experimental new Augs. They investigated a bit in the game. He has some uh, sort of telecom contacts with David Seraph, and it's never really clarified who uh, gave him these Augs until much later. We know the person who had worked on the technology regarding the experimental Augs is murdered, so the plot thickens, but it's very clear towards the end of the game, and you can find the cutscene in the credits. You'll know what I'm talking about if you played through it, who did it, and what the intentions were behind it. Fair enough. Another issue I had with the game, plot story-wise, is Marchenko, Victor Marchenko, this revolutionary with a giant mechanical arm who wants to fuck up all the naturals and wants to, you know, fight for his augmented brothers and sisters. Well, he has no motivation. He, he appears to you as a ranting lunatic, effectively. Just, we need to fight for the Augs, and, and that's pretty much it. He, he's not a very subtle character, which is fine, but you don't even know what his motivations are. And there's some ni nice little uh, quests in between, and Prague looks pretty nice, and the, the graphical improvements are appreciated, but storytelling-wise, it was pretty poor, I think, overall. Combat's definitely improved. But let's face it, this is a basically a stealth game. If you want to go and go gun ho, you're not going to be as well rewarded as you would be for stealth. Perhaps even justifiably so, if only because stealth play in almost every game is more difficult than just running up to someone or shooting them or hacking them with an axe or a sword. There's no denying that. But still, they could have done a little bit better balancing act there. You know, you have smooth operator and ghost rewards in terms of experience. Uh, maybe you could have all-out rewards where you just, in a single shooting, gun down a certain number of people or what have you. I don't know. I pl I've only played it through once, finished it a couple of days ago, and I did an all-stealth uh, run and a pacifist as well. I got the pacifist achievement. Started a second playthrough and just stopped and, and said to myself, I'm going to let it rest for now because I need to digest this. I need to think about this game and what it means and how things have uh, proceeded. And I, I do think its predecessor, Deus Ex Ma a Human Revolution, was better. It seemed just much more visceral. Um, the intrigue, the plot, the various plots, seemed more interesting overall. Um, now you could argue that it's a much smaller scale. It's, you know, Adam J J Jensen has joined Task Force 29, and it, he, he's trying to take down the Illuminati, because we know the Illuminati are the enemies. But still... The, there could have been better, more interesting revelations. Overall, it's a pretty good game, but I think it, it's disappointing in all the aspects and respects that I've uh, so far named. Another silly <clears throat> problem with the game is this limited-use DLC. I had pre-ordered the game, mistakenly or, or not, perhaps foolishly, in the hopes of... Uh, a suit, well, in my hopes that I, I just thought, this is Eidos, this is... You know, Square Enix, they're going to make something really good. 
And they had this, these weird sort of one-time DLC things, like ammunition you use only for once, if you so choose, to transfer it from your storage space. Praxis kits, it's kind of nice. But once again, really cheap, uh, inconsequential DLC. And the re -D real DLC, presumably story DLC, will almost certainly be needed to clarify some of the biggest plot holes in the game. And this is a really disturbing trend I see in gaming in general and all kinds of RPGs. And at the end of the day, Deus Ex is an RPG. It's a stealth RPG. Yeah, you can go gung-ho, but it's mostly stealth if you want to get the rewards. So we don't know the motivation of the real bad guy, of the bad guy presented to you in the game. The bad guy is just, he just appears to be a giant raving lunatic with a giant mechanical arm who just wants to kill non-augmented people. But, well, I mean, maybe we'll find out what, why he was motivated to do this and how he went about it and who he was working for and with, but uh, that would probably be reserved for a DLC. Same issue, of course, with uh, with the the major plot thing regarding Adam Jansen. He got all these experimental augs between the aug incident where um, basically Taiwan, uh, Tai Young Industries, aka the Illuminati, or it's a front for the Illuminati, made everyone go bonkers and kill people two years prior to the uh, current game setting. Um, he disappeared off, went off the grid, the map. He doesn't know what happened. And presumably under during that time, he, something happened to him. Now, it is revealed, as I said, that during the credits, you have to sit through all these credits to finally find out this sort of hidden gem that not only is the Task Force 29 psychiatrist a Illuminati plant, uh, but, or psychologist, I believe, but... Adam Jensen, apparently, in the time of his absence, had been kidnapped or absconded with or whatever by the Illuminati. And they were the ones responsible for installing all these experimental OGs. And their real goal is to get into the secret organization led by Janus, which, you know, those of you probably know, maybe you don't know, Janus is uh, the, the god of doors and portals in... Latin, hence the name Janus, and uh, I'm try. I don't recall the name of the organization off the top of my head. Forgive me, but it's sort of the counter organization, the Illuminati, trying to whatever. But you know, we have to wait through the entire game to find that out, and it's not even revealed. It could have been included in the main game as a major side quest or something. Instead, we're going to have to wait for a DLC, and thus the picture that you're seeing now fully illustrates the problem, the problems I have with this game. It, is, it follows very much the model uh, of gaming in all sorts of games, but certainly and especially in the current year. And I, you know, I don't care that I'm using the word the current year. Yet games that are basically incomplete. I mean, you don't want to think of them that way, but whether by design, and I do think it's by design, or something else, you have games put out there that just... They're not really finished products because developers insist on adding all these little nuggets of DLC. And I want you to look at the this chart, if you wish to call it that, and just the, the Mona Lisa here, and just see what's going on here. And I hate to keep on going back to CD Projekt Red, but really, they're not perfect, but they are the company that really stands out as being exceptional and outstanding. Every other company has drifted in the in the direction of the so-called next-gen paradigm and next-gen model. Whereas if you look carefully, what we see in the 1999 portrayal, that is CD Projekt Red. You got an entire massive game in Witcher 3, great game. I'm actually doing a final playthrough or final, probably for a while, final right now. Taking my time with it, so I'm still just finished, uh, just finished uh, Hearts of Stone. And you know, you're looking at it, you have entire game, and you have expansion packs, which is what they call them, that are stories and games unto themselves. I haven't even gotten around to Blood and Wine yet. And other companies, unfortunately like Eidos or Enix, they, they do the next-gen thing. Lots of shitty little DLC things, one-time use in this case, then microtransactions in a single-player RPG. That's another thing that obviously not obligatory, but still weird. 
and then DLC, DLC, that's going to explain some of the major plot points for the protagonist, Adam Jensen. You can play through the entirety of Witcher 3 without ever touching DLC or buying it. I would strongly recommend that you get it, because uh, at least Hearts of Stone is fantastic, and I've heard great things about Blood and Wine, but, you know, that's the difference in the model. And CD Projekt Red then gives you all the free DLC, all the shit that you get in, say, Deus Ex, and more, like equipment, weapons, little quest lines that are well written, all this stuff, different uh, appearances. Yeah, that's all part of the DLC. It's all free. You get it with just buying the main game. And then on top of it, two massive expansion packs that add new and really interesting and I think well-told layers to the game. But that's CD Projekt Red. They're stuck in 1999. Thank the gods. But then... I hate to say it, you get something like Eidos, and I'm just thinking, what are you guys doing? This is a major plot point for the protagonist, and, you know, you, you save it for the very end, you give us a little hint, yeah, you're going to have to get the DLC to figure it out. Okay, great, thanks. And possibly they won't even reveal it to you, who knows? So, it's overall, it's a pretty, it's an okay game, it's kind of fun, the stealth is kind of fun, you know, it's cool playing a super augmented agent that's running around and gunning and doing all this cool stuff but uh, the game itself i just think they took five five years or so to develop this pretty short as well um you know maybe i'm being too hard on them but i, I just expected more i thought mistakenly that this would be better than what it turned out to be so yeah that's a sigh of disappointment um is it worth getting? Yeah, I think so. When it comes down in price significantly. I wouldn't get it now. Just just wait. Wait till it comes out in a Game of the Year edition or there's a winter sale on Steam or I don't know. But not worth getting in its current state. All my faith is gone. Uh, I don't have faith in CD Projekt Red, but I have confidence based on the very own the very words of the CEO. Marcel Wisinski. I can't pronounce his name. Apologies. But... I mean, his methodology, the methodology and philosophy of the company itself, they're very focused, they're goal-oriented, they want to work towards one specific game at a time, towards finishing it. That's, I think, what I want to see and what a lot of people want to see. And I guess you could say the same about Eidos, but it just didn't turn out that way. But overall, it's a pretty good game. It's definitely, I think, worth maybe 20 bucks. It's not worth, uh, what is it I paid? Uh, 50 euros, I don't think. But... That's just my, my view of things. Eh, pretty good. I've always liked the concept of augmentation and Deus Ex. And, I mean, personally, I'm interested in things like transhumanism. But you know, if you're not interested in that or if you don't have tremendous interest in that, the game might be significantly less interesting to you as an individual. But uh, you know, having a cliffhanger that isn't revealed in the actual game but will almost certainly have to be revealed in some paid DLC later You've seen this too many times. I mean, look at what happened in the very poorly uh, designed and developed game Dragon Age Inquisition, right? I mean, the whole thing about Solus. I mean, before that, beyond it just being poorly done in the uh, the base game, you you, can't, you know you have to wait for a major DLC, the final DLC, to understand the whole thing. Fair enough, you know. I guess if, I guess if that's what people want to do, that's what they want to do. And if people are going to buy it, they're going to buy it. But you know, I had already ordered the DLC, so I'm stuck with it. And, um, I guess I'm looking forward to the reveal of what happened to Adam Jensen, but um, but by and large, it's uh, been disappointing, I think. Not a bad game, pretty good, uh, especially if you like the transhumanist kind of stuff, but uh, not the best. Um, and I think the, the predecessor was legitimately better, more interesting, better dialogue, more intriguing, and they could have done a better job at it. So anyway, that is my, <laughs> those are my thoughts and my review of this. I probably later today we'll get back to The Witcher. I'm moving my way towards finally doing Blood and Wine before really tackling the, the major stuff and the, and the main quest. And I'm looking forward to that because I've heard so many good things. You know, and I can just spend, you know, a, hours sometimes just wandering the landscape of The Witcher 3. The, the landscape is amazing. The graphics are look really great. I have a pretty good card, you know, um, 90... TI, GTX 90 Ti, so I can see things really well, and 
the forests of the mountains of Skellige, the, the ocean, the sea, even the swampland of Velen. It's, um, yeah, it's just... The more I think about it, I just realize that CD Projekt Red is a freak occurrence, and I'm grateful to that. But, uh, and on a, on a semi-final note, let me add <laughs> Nuka Cola World, or whatever it's called, Nuka World. Haven't touched it, but, you know, given the fact that I had ordered the DLC, uh, the season pass when it first came out, you know, I have it. You know, I could install it if I wanted and play it, but I've heard a lot of disappointing things. It's basically, you know, you're the exact opposite. In the main game, you're forced to play a goody two-shoes, and now you're forced to play a raider, and I don't know what Bethesda is doing. Is it worth the elevated price of $50 or 50 euros that they're now demanding? Almost certainly not. The content just isn't there. Um, I, Bethesda's been going down a really, really dangerous path in my personal estimation, but um, remains to be seen. Uh, Todd Howard, formerly God Howard, I mean, let's face it, he's pretty immortal, making a statement to the effect of, well, you know, the kind of technology we would need to employ in order to get um, get uh, the next Elder Scrolls off the ground, it's not there yet, so they're either working on it or thinking about it, I don't know, but... Uh, I mean, the final DLC for Fallout 4 was as disappointing as the game has been. Even though I haven't played it, I've seen the reviews. Majority, just very negative. I mean, but it sold well. So, in the future, I think my policy will only be CD Projekt Red, take my money, wait for a review on pretty much everything else. Um, you know, I, I guess. I, I just don't know anymore. The gaming world has become a dreary, depressing place where... You become so anesthetized, anesthetized with stuff like. Uh, I'm legitimately disappointed. I don't feel particularly angry, but yeah, well, you know, Deus Ex was a mankind of a pretty good game, but uh, not much beyond that. I felt no, you know, heavy impact. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't really want to linger in the world too much. Maybe that's just me. It's just okay, cool, move on. And my nostalgia and attachment to The Witcher 3 is such that I, you know, I had signed up the minute it was announced for online Gwent, the beta, and I, I pray to the gods, to Zeus, that I am chosen for that because I think it's going to be... I trust CD Projekt Red. I don't faith them, but I trust them that online Gwent is going to be fun and interesting uh, as long as it keeps the main principles of Gwent. And it'll be some way to sort of say reconnected uh, or rather connected to the world of uh, Witcher Geralt and um, in general uh, that whole project that CD Red Project Red has been working on for 10 years but anyway that's all I got to say about uh, the rather inglorious game Deus Ex Mankind Divided uh, I guess just another one for the archives as Winston would like uh, likely say no actually he says one for the archives yeah that's what it was uh, not bad but um I think I'll be waiting a while before I actually complete my second playthrough. Anyway, thanks for everyone. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, a bit rambly, I admit, but man, it's just the direction role-playing games have gone in, and, and gaming in general, just really, really disappointing overall. Yeah, enjoy the rest of your week and wherever you might be. And I'm hoping that uh, the weather changes for the better soon and we move from this disgustingly hot summer to a pleasant and cool autumn temperature. So take care and bye-bye.